So I have a question. How many girls does it take to change the continent of Africa? My answer is one. One girl with a passion for science can change the entire continent. Because if you have a passion for science, you can really, really shift things. You can make things change fundamentally. Uh, and that's what I'm interested in. Now, a passion for science in the right hands can have that impact. A passion for science in the wrong hands uh, can cause a bit of a problem, as I discovered myself uh, about 25 years ago uh, when I was getting married. Um, I, was, uh, I only had one job to do, and my job was to organise the honeymoon. I have a passion for science, so I obviously chose that we should visit a uh, mathematical institute in New Mexico. <laughs> what I discovered quite early on in my marriage, in fact, what I discovered on day one of my marriage, is that, and this may come as a surprise to some of you, that apparently a visit to a science research institute is not considered a romantic destination uh, for, for a honeymoon. So it's worth just keeping that in mind, and I'll certainly keep it in mind uh, for any sort of future... Actually, no, there won't uh, be any uh, future uh, events. The reason why I was attracted to the Santa Fe Institute is that it is the place where you study complexity science and chaos theory. And I'm particularly interested in those areas and particularly interested in the way they talk about change and the way they drive change and how small changes can result in massively different outcomes. Lawrence, the uh, mathematician, put it beautifully when he said, does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil cause a tornado in Texas? Or to put it another way, does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Benin cause a tornado in Tanzania? And that's what I'm really interested in, the idea that slight changes in the initial conditions can drive massive changes uh, at, at the end and the outcome, particularly in the context of change in Africa. There's this underlying thinking in change in Africa that the way that it works is that if you want to create massive change, you have to put in massive inputs. You have to have huge projects, you have to have huge amounts of money, you have to have huge numbers of people in order to drive any sort of change. And what I'm wondering is whether the ideas that come out of the butterfly effect tell us that there may be different ways to do this. There may be ways to do this where actually slight changes can ripple through these systems and cause massive outcomes. And that's what I'm really interested in. If we take a step back and just think about the scale of Africa, 1.2 billion people live on the continent and 40% of them are under the age of 15. So that's about 500 million people under the age of 15. It's a staggering number. And if we think about intelligence and assume, as we should do, that Africa has uh, the same normal distribution of intelligence as any other continent around the world. So we're looking for geniuses. One in a thousand people has that level of intelligence that you might call a genius. In the African context, that means that there are 500,000 young people who, were they anywhere in the world, would be classified as genius. And there are 500,000 of them in, spread across the African continent. I'm not feeling the presence of 500,000 geniuses across the continent. I don't know where they are, and I don't know what they're doing, and how they're being leveraged. And if we push it even further, up to Einstein level of intelligence, someone told me that you would have to look for one person in 25,000 in order to find someone with that level of intelligence. That means in Africa, there are 20,000 children today across the continent with Einstein level of intelligence. Do you know their names? Do you know where they are, what they're doing? With that astonishing level of intelligence. Imagine being born in a village, in a township, on the edge of a city, and you have that sort of brain power, but you don't have the resources, you don't have the opportunity to use it. How must that feel? You know, somebody needs to be looking for those young people and needs to be developing them. And that is what I'm doing. I am looking for those young people with that astonishing level of intelligence and I'm trying to give them the opportunities to use that to make changes across the continent. Those young people are my butterflies 
Those are the ones that I'm determined to find and I'm determined to take them into programs to develop them and I'm determined that they will just have the opportunity, I can unleash them and they'll have the opportunity to flap their wings and cause a ripple of change uh, across the continent. I am not really a theoretical guy, I'm someone who has an idea and then tries to put it into action. So I have created a school, the African Science Academy, for girls to study science and maths. We opened it last year. The school is designed specifically for young women from across the continent to come to the school and focus their attention on their passion for science and maths. The school is in Ghana, but we have young people, young women there from across the continent, from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Sierra Leone, from Cameroon, Ethiopia, Uganda, and we're scouring the continent for other young women like this. And these are brilliant young women. They come to our college, they don't have to worry about fees, we take care of all the fees, so they have nothing to think about from a financial point of view, they just focus on the educational uh, opportunity. And they study hard sciences, they come to study maths, further maths and physics at A-level standard, and they do maths, further maths, physics at A-level in one year instead of the usual two years, because they are extremely bright, extremely impressive uh, young women. And outside of their core subjects, they study a whole range of other things as well, from computing to Chinese, they read fiction to feminism, we develop them as young women, how to express themselves, how to think, how to argue, how to explore, and then our aim is to unleash them uh, on the world and let's see the ripples uh, that they cause. Back to the question, how many girls does it take to change the African continent? One. One girl with a passion for science and with the opportunities and the resources to really make use of that passion, unleash it on the world, flap their wings and cause ripples across the continent. And this is what she looks like. Thank you very much.